Welcome to Xamega videos. In the previous video, we learned how to create a WPF employee search form using Xamega. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a WPF form for editing employee details. First off, let's review our employee CRUD operations that we define in the object model. To support them, we have defined two structures in the model. First one is employee key that consists just of an employee ID. We will be passing this structure around in the CRUD operations. The second structure is pay history data that is based on the employee pay history subobject. Our read operation takes the employee key as the input structure and then returns some basic employee information, including contact information, manager information, and the list of pay history data structures. Uh, our update operation takes as an input some employee data that needs to be updated. Uh, and uh, this data can be quite different from what the read operation returns and also different from the internal structure of the employee entity. Our create operation just creates a blank employee entity in memory and then returns a temporary employee key back to the client which can then be used to call any update operation and then save all the changes. This is a very flexible design which allows reusing the same update operations for both existing and newly created objects. The delete operation takes just the key structure of the employee to be deleted. We have implemented these operations in our employee service. So let's just take a quick look at the implementation. If you recall, our service class extends from Exomega Framework base class for entity-based services, which automatically provides us some useful methods. Now, what the create method does is it adds a new employee entity to the object context and then calls Exomega method temp key ID to get a temporary ID for the new employee that it returns back to the client. Our read method calls the getEntityKey method from the base class to obtain the entity key from the employee ID, whether a temporary or existing one, which is then used to access the employee entity. It then creates the result structure and populates it from the employee object. To copy all properties with the same names, you can use a utility method copy properties from Xomega Framework. As a matter of fact, both update and delete method use that same function to get the entity key from the employee ID. The update method can also use the copy properties to update employee properties with the same name. Now that we have implemented the server side, we need to build the presentation layer data objects that will serve as a data model for our employee details form. This is where Xamega uses an innovative yet very powerful approach. The idea is that because our form will be reading and updating data from our service operations, the structures of the underlying data objects would be better off based on the input and output structures of these operations. In our case, we start by declaring a Xamega data object called employee object for the employee key structure. And then we merge the read output structure and the update input structure into that same object. For each nested or included structure like contact info or pay history data, we need to declare their own presentation data object classes like the employee pay history here. So that easily Xamega lets us build presentation objects from service operations. Now let's go ahead and generate our presentation data objects and then just review the generated classes. We'll reload the project, and take a look at the employee object. So the generated employee object is partial to allow uh, customizing it in the code and it extends the base class data object from Xamega Framework. It initializes all properties of the right type 
based on the corresponding logical types configurations and also adds uh, a child contact object and a child list for employee pay history. To finish it off, let's generate the actual employee details form. In the generator configuration, we can set the output path, the form name, and the namespace. But most importantly, we should point to our details object from the model, which is the employee object. So let's run the generator and we'll include the generated details form into the project. Let's open it up. The form fields uh, are laid out in two columns and use the right controls as per the logical type configuration. Down below there is a pay history grid and the save and close buttons. All controls are automatically bound to the underlying data properties in the XAML. The code behind is uh, also generated with a static invoke method that uh, loads the data by calling the service read operation right here. It also has a check for unsaved changes and the save button handler that first validates the object, displays the errors if it's invalid, and then calls the update service method and then uh, the save changes method to commit all the changes. This method is actually common to all Xamega services and is automatically implemented by the base service class. Note that all calls to the uh, update data should happen in the same service session. Before we run our application, let's enhance the employee search form that we generated by including the employee search partial class that invokes the employee details form when uh, double clicking on any employee row. We'll make it unobtrusively in a separate file to allow regenerating the employee search form. Now we can go ahead and run the application by hitting F5. In the employee search, uh, let's find all employees whose name contains SH. So let's hit search. Uh, double clicking on a row opens up an employee details form that we just built. Now I would like to go over some features that are automatically implemented by our generated form. This is all made possible as a result of combining our Xamega object model with the power of Xamega framework. As you can see, the required fields are automatically highlighted with bold labels. This is based on the label style template that we define in our application file, which uh, just as well could have marked those with an asterisk or to that matter in any other way. Fields with innumerable values like marital status or gender use the drop-down list with proper set of possible values based on the enumerations that we define in the model or display the decoded values like pay frequency, for example. Their value uh, that they display is actually configurable in terms of the format. The pay history grid also displays properly formatted currency and dates, as do other controls. All required or invalid fields are validated as you edit them and uh, whenever you hit save and display the appropriate error messages. So let's make some invalid entries here and um, you'll see that the error messages properly display the red asterisk next to the invalid fields. And when you hit save, all the messages are listed in the error message uh, window. The form also automatically keeps track of the modifications so that if you try to close a modified form, it will uh, prompt you to save your changes. We'll discard those. So far, both of these forms are totally regenerable. This means that we can quickly prototype such forms, validate them with the users, 
make the necessary updates to the model, and then regenerate, and then make the final manual adjustment to the layout and the behavior. This concludes this tutorial on how to build multi-tier WPF.NET applications. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to build the same forms in Silverlight to get a rich web application. Thank you for watching.